This is a video for how to go about creating number three for activity 4.2 model creation. Now one of the things that it will ask you um, in the conclusion questions is why is it important to consider efficiency when planning your method of creation before you begin to model an object in a computer aided design software? So one of the reasons you want to ask yourself that is what's going to be the way for us to make this with the least amount of steps and also if we make a mistake what's going to be the most efficient way for us to go back and edit or modify that part so in looking at this object I'm gonna go ahead and click on my plus and let's uh, take a zoom in here the front view of the object we could say is this letter L and it has two cuts in it now there's always more than let's say probably five ways to create um, any object in Inventor almost but in this object what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an L shape and then we're gonna do two cuts out of it now how I'm gonna go about doing this is I'm actually gonna flip this and say that this is the back of the object and we're actually gonna draw the letter L together um, the opposite direction so let's go back to Inventor and you will note that I've created activity 4.2 number one and activity 4.2 number two. Um, this object that we're looking at is going to be in inches. So let's go back to Inventor, go to File, and go to New, and we're going to go to English, Inch, IPT, and let's say Create. And we're going to click on our pencil, and we're going to go to our XY plane. And what I want you to do is we're going to click on the Line command, and I want you just to draw an L shape for me. So there's multiple ways to go about doing all kinds of things in Inventor, but I'm just going to draw this L shape. And one of the things you absolutely have to make sure you do is that you close off on the bottom. A lot of times students will see this X axis and think that this is a line. It is not. So we're going to go ahead and come back to the origin and click. And we're going to right click and say OK. So one thing we want to do is take a look at the two longest dimensions for our front view. And that's three and a half wide by two and a half tall. We're going to place those first. So I'm going to go to dimension and come to our horizontal line and drag down 3.5 enter and our vertical line is 2.5 and hit enter and let's click on the word front and you're going to notice that we have this kind of weird L shape. Let's right click and say OK. Now what's cool about this is you've only placed two dimensions on this so you can still drag these lines around wherever they want to go so even if either even if you have it over here and it's really skinny sometimes you'll see a line that goes through an object like that you can still click and drag it over if this line was going underneath you could still click and just drag it up because you've only put numeric constraints on two objects just or excuse me two lines just this line and this line these are numerically allowed to be whatever width or height they want to be right now so let's go back to inventor or excuse me back to our drawing it is one horizontally here and it'll be one vertically here so we have two dimensions of one we're gonna click on dimension and click on this line one enter we're gonna click on this vertical line one enter and we now have our L shape let's go back to our object the total depth of the object is 0.5 plus 1.5 plus 0.5 so this is going to wind up being two and a half go to finish sketch click on your house let's go to extrude let's hit here 2.5 and hit enter and we now offer ourselves this L shape so what we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and start drawing the rectangle on this object that would cut all the way through it so let's go back to Inventor and I want you to click on your pencil and we're gonna click on this surface and it's gonna flip this way for us now if we look at the object the cut goes one and a half back one in from each side so let's grab a hold of our uh, two-point rectangle tool and one of the things whenever you click on a line we're gonna do outside but let's pretend I wanted to drag this along the line sometimes people will see a green dot and they'll snap that green dot if you look at it is 1.25 along the y-axis. If you remember, we extruded this from front to back a distance of 2.5. The green dot represents the midpoint along this line. It'll find the midpoint of any line. We're not going to worry about that for now. We're just going to come out here and click and draw a rectangle that goes inside the object. And we're going to right click and say OK. Now we're going to go to dimension. And we said that from this line here to this vertical line here was one and a half. And we're going to hit enter. And now on the front, we said from the sides in we're going to be a distance of one we see that right here let's go back dimension from this line here wait till it turns red for me dimension to this line here distance of one and hit enter this line here to this line here at 
to mention. Sometimes the graphics, sometimes it's whatever graphics card you have. I don't know if my graphics pick up on these lines. You can see that I'm right on top of them at times, and sometimes it just doesn't want to get along. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, the reason why I dragged this rectangle out here is sometimes my students will be right along this line, and they'll be barely inside, like, you know, like a, a millimeter inside, and they're going to see this little sliver. If I go to finish sketch, you can see this is on the outside. This guarantees a cut through the object. So when I click here, we're going to come over to cut, and we're going to go down to all, and we're going to say OK and it cut all the way through the object. So our next cut is going to be on this surface back here. Kind of a similar concept, but 0.5 in from the sides and 0.5 down. So let's go back to Inventor, let's go to our pencil, and let's click on this surface right here. And we're going to click on the word right, and we're going to go to two-point rectangle. And we're going to click and drag a rectangle inside the object. Same song, different dimensions from here over to the side and up, and I'm going to put in 0.5. Now on the right side, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go from here, from this line right here, and we're going to go ahead and come into here, and we're going to drag up. Now instead of putting in 0.5, I want you to come over and we're going to tap on this 0.5 over here. And you're going to see that says D11, and that's the 11th dimension that you've placed so far. And we're going to hit the check mark. Now what's cool about this is you see that FX, if you remember what we did in Excel in uh, other lessons, FX means function. So this over here, if this, I said, you know what, this is actually 0.6, and I hit enter, this is going to function the same as whatever this is. So you see how that turned to 0.6. I'm going to double click on the 0.6 and put in 0.5 and hit enter. We can do the exact same thing for the top down. So we're going to go from here to here and drag over. Now I can come over and tap on this 0.5, but I can also click on this little arrow, and you can see that this has the main dimensions that I've been placing so far. This has the last five dimensions I've placed, so I can actually just click on 0.5 right there and hit my check mark, and now it's automatically going to adjust. We're going to go to Finish Sketch, and I'm going to go to Extrude. I'm going to click inside this object, and we're going to go to Cut, and we're going to go to All, and we're going to say OK. Now this was an efficient way of creating this object because you're going to notice I have three extrusions in my browser bar and you can see as I drag over them there's the third extrusion there's the second extrusion and there's the first extrusion now what's cool about these things in the side view is you can call these whatever you want so if I tapped once on extrusion one and tapped again I can come in here and call this L shape and hit enter and like oh that's the L shape that we just drew and then extrusion two I can call this I don't know I'm gonna call it I don't know skinny or rectangle you know, you can call these whatever you want. And then the top part, I'm just going to call this, you know, tap here and just call this, you know, top extrusion, whatever you want to call it. You can go over here and call these extrusions whatever you wish. So it makes it really easy to understand what everything is. And you can right click on any one of these and go down to edit feature. And you can be like, you know what, that wasn't supposed to go all the way back. It was only supposed to go a distance. I can say, OK, you know, I can right click and go to edit sketch and say, you know, our sketch wasn't right. So <clears throat> if I go to 0.5 and I go, you know, what? actually, that's 0.1 and I hit my check mark. Notice that that functions the same as that. And when I go to finish sketch, it's going to automatically adjust for you. Now, I don't want that. So I'm going to say undo up here at the top and I'm going to say undo again. And we're going to go back to where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and hit save. Call this activity 4.2 number 3 and say save. So you've created the first three parts for activity 4.2. Let's click on my home down here and let's click on this little X. Click on the little X. And you're going to notice that you have your three parts. What if I wanted to view all these to show somebody that I had done all of them? You can go to view up here at the top and where it says tile all, you can go to tile vertically. And you're going to notice that all three of the objects tile vertically. If you wanted to make them longer and skinnier, you can go to tile horizontally, and it, it's just a too much area of white over here on the left and right. Go to tile vertically, and look at that. You have all of your objects sitting here. So, you know, you can actually, you know, click inside of any one of these objects and say, you know what, I'm going to rotate this up, and I'm going to come over inside of this object, and I'm going to rotate that down, and you can just tap inside the object and do whatever you want to do. What's neat about these views is look at your browser bar. If I tap in here, I only see those two extrusions I made. Tap in here, the browser bar keeps changing in relationship to what you've already done. So it's kind of an interesting way to go about looking at an object 
and you know saying you know, I have these three objects open and I want to analyze three things at one time this is kind of a neat way to do it so as in regards to uh, the first three objects out of activity 4.2 you'll notice that the one the two and the three mainly deal with additive and subtractive rectangular prisms we only really dealt with rectangles and straight lines you know number four is going to deal with creating this pair cam shape and uh, we're generally going to go about creating those via something known as parametric equations so this has been the video for how to create number three for activity 4.2.